what up so let's talk about github actions in next years like what is the role of ci cd pipeline and why are they important and then we will try to you know deploy one github action so ci cd pipeline or here to be specific github actions we will be you know having this robust testing setup this generally is not important when you are making a very small application but as your application grows and you know you uh, come up with working in different teams in such cases uh, this plays a very important role because let's say i'm working on a feature a and some other person is working on feature b and there is already exist, uh, existing feature which is feature c uh, for uh, due to some of my work in feature a uh, feature c is breaking and we won't realize it because we are working parallelly and then we we are not going to test all the features let's say there are thousands of features in our application and testing them manually is tedious and even if someone is doing so for some reason they can miss out one or two features uh, due to multiple reasons and that's why you know automated testing are really important and other thing is that anything breaks you are you will be knowing it and you can fix it asap and without affecting the production in the lower environments other thing is passing in secrets and environment variables so let's say in your department there are multiple teams working on different services and each services some are authenticated some needs authorization and others are like public so for the authorization services you can set up organization wide secret keys you know that can be accessed through you have environment secrets and then there are there like there's two way one is repository level and the other one is in organization level depending upon the requirement you can set up uh, for both of them so that is another thing and then the flawless deployment so as someone pushes these webhooks that pick up so because uh, since we are using nextjs you must be aware of vercel and its deployment so it is also one of the examples of basic ci cd pipeline so what happens is let's say if you configure it with the github github pings the vercel webhook and then it gets the response that we are good to you know deploy and it just builds the process and in case if build succeeds then it deploys uh, the new version that is the idea so not just vercel you know basically anything like let's say if you want to deploy to amazon s3 you can have all those api key secrets in your you know repository level or even organization level and then you can perform the deployment operation so like there are a lot of things uh, that can be involved with, and there are a lot of use cases but these are one of the major ones and that's why it is very important and here we will be you know seeing how to set up the testing environment with next js we won't be diving deeper into it because the scope of this video is to understand github actions ci cd pipeline and why they are important and how we can use it with next js the other one is to uh, setting up the secrets and then using environment variables so without any further delay let's get started so if i just go here you can see in this next js docs you will find all the testing resources you can test it with cypress you can test it with playwright and then finally test cypress and playwright are majorly for you know e2e or integration testing let's say you want to start from login screen log the user in then go to feed page add a post add some kind of post category or tag or whatever and then post it so this entire flow is you know integration or end to end testing kind of thing so we will be focusing on just only just as like you know it's not just specific to next it is a testing library for entire javascript ecosystem uh, but uh, yeah like it's very much used in react and next based application so we will go there so if i just scroll down and you can see these examples how ui visit get then what the url should and all these these are the syntax of testing and yeah we won't go into that much depth because we are more focused on github actions so let's just scroll down and here we have just testing library here you can find all the guides either you want to use with rust compiler because the newer version of next are using rust compiler behind the scenes for better developer experience fast reloading and all those things if you are using babel they have also given the instructions to set up set it up for babel so this is the template which you can pick i just copy pasted it and used it as it is and then it gives you a you know boilerplate which looks something like here i will go so all the test and all the snapshots snapshot is basically the snap that is created when you know test happens and on each testing this is matched against the snapshot to check it so if you see this index uh, it is to be in the document so it is checking for welcome to next year should be in the document the other one is to match the snapshot so if the snapshot changes then it will throw an error so that is one idea and of course you can modify update your snapshot so let's say if i just go to index.tsx and let's say i quickly add hmm, modified snapshot and if i save it and if i clear and run a yarn test ci i'll tell about what these say basically these are you know in uh, parameter cli options that just provides you can see lot of cli options and everything in here in doc cli so majorly this you is to you know update your existing snapshot then coverage is to get the coverage how much of your code is covered so you see here our test is failing because this is the additional thing which was unexpected that came in so let's say for some reason if anything changes you can you know identify these things and i hope you are getting a just of why testing is important if let's say for some reason you change a header or something like that which was critical that can be easily determined in these tests so if i just remove this out uh, i can either remove this out or i can just add to this snapshot so remove let's just add it so yarn test ci u So basically, this will, as I told you, these CLI options, uh, these this will update. So here we have I have set up some like dash dash CI, dash dash coverage, watches to continuously watch as you are making changes and to rerun the test again and again, and then lint and test coverage and everything. So build, I want to you know confirm if there are any linting error or warning, and then check the coverage in the CI continuous integration mode, and then finally build. So so now the snapshot is up, updated, so everything is good. So yeah, so that is about the snapshot and test. So you can write all these tests. This is how the syntax looks uh, right there, and you can learn more about this. Uh, you can find a lot of documentation on this. In the coverage here, you will get all the coverage report. So let's say I do a yarn test coverage so this gives me the coverage how it is covered so it says that uh, 88.8% and the line 71 is not covered and let's see what line 71 is 
So okay, so here we have this return statement and this you know uh, if the data uh, secrets basically API key. If uh, I'll, I'll tell you why we are using this. This is for the example of uh, you know if you have some secret API key that is distributed throughout these uh, repositories, then you want to you know keep it into GitHub secrets, and that's why. So because the statement is not tested, because we have to test in both cases if secret key exists in distributed data, otherwise not. And that's why this error, this is saying that line 71 is not covered. But anyways, that we will see for later. So. Yeah, so idea is you know to pass this secret API key and give you the example of both. So without um, without uh, you know getting further into it, let's first try to understand uh, what exactly. So this coverage, as you see, the coverage report says that line 71 is not covered. You can use it to you know get the coverage of your entire code base and accordingly. And you can always configure this in just config uh, where you do all these coverage. Uh, you know you can ignore specific files. You can take specific files. You can put all of those details in here. And yeah, so that is one thing. Then in setup, you can you know add anything which you want to mock across all the tests. Like if you see, I mock log to just uh, you know be. If I remove this, then if in any case if I am using console log, then it will log it, and I don't want to add unnecessary logs, and that's why I mock it. So this will be common across all the tests. So you put all those things in the setup file. Okay, so that is another thing. Uh, coverage and then pages public request is just something which I created to test my own. So basically, this makes an HTTP request. It has nothing to do with this the styles and everything. This is coming from next environment here. We are like we are storing secret API key that you know. Mm, that is there and you want, don't want to push it directly to the github so that is also one thing and then accordingly we have types and everything so this is the idea i hope you got the idea of like how the folder structure is so let's just get add all these updated files and now let's create a workflow so just make sure you also follow this uh, the typing is important because this is how github will uh, identify that it is you know the workflow that is going to be you know tested before push so this is it i'll just put a template here and i will explain how this works so next unit tests on push so basically it will trigger on these two events push off branch to main and pull request whenever you know uh, someone asks for a pull request or uh, to merge something to the main in those cases it will trigger now this you can name anything jobs whatever job you want to name it will run on ubuntu latest because we don't have any specific os requirement then check out v2 uh, we are checking out then node version again node version is something that you want to use on your own so you can always do node v and then uh, accordingly put the version in here then install the yarn and finally run the unit test with this and then build the project so this is the idea so if i just save it and add it get add and then get added workflow and then git push if we have nothing to pull yeah and if i just go quickly to github and refresh this page so you can see this yellow marking so this is basically what indicates that tests are running and if this passes then only it will merge so you can see all the processes and everything and if you click on these you will be able to see the logs of individual processes also so this is how what is the log of yarn and that's why it is very important you know to put only those things in log that are required so this tests have been passed and now the build process is also almost successful so once this entire build is complete then we can uh, then it will be you know successfully uh, deploy uh, push to master branch so yeah it is done and now the cleanup is done so you see this green check mark this means the push is successful now let's say now this is uh, what is happening so i hope the process is clear now let's say that um, if we go to index.tsx if we don't have you know Uh, because here I have used this ternary operation, but let's say if we don't have the secret API key, then we want to, you know, mm, like we want to halt the process or we don't want to proceed. So in that case, uh, process dot. If this is undefined, then I want to throw new error. To so throw new error, let's say mm, mm, secrets does don't exist. So if I do this and if I run a build in my local system, this build will succeed. Reason being, you see this info loaded environment from this particular file. so it because this is but i have added this in git ignore the purpose to add this in git ignore is that uh, you know these are the uh, what do you say that these are like mm, confidential secrets these are sensitive this is a sensitive information that's not supposed to be shared and that's why i have added it in like uh, by default next template gets ignore it into this you know dot env dot local and that is why it is important now if i push it to github and you know do the run now if i push it to github and do a run you will see that uh, this will fail reason being because dot env dot local is not present there so if i just do a git add and git commit m pushing updates to get up so now let's just do a git push and the push was successful now let's refresh this now you will see what happens so let this job start now that it has started the unit test will pass because you know it has nothing to do with the environment variables but during the pre rendering when it will hit that get static props then you will see that because it does not have environment variables and that's why it will throw an error so let's wait for that So you can see that coverage ES lint is fine. Co tests have happened successfully, but and here we get this error. Error occurred at pre-rendering the page. And if you see more information, if we scroll down, we will see export encounter the following paths. Now, so this is the error. Secrets don't exist. And I hope you got it why this error is coming because this file is not there. So now comes the role of GitHub secrets. So if I just go to settings and add secrets, so 
let's add secret for action repository secret environment secrets we can for now we can just focus on a new repository secret because we don't need environment secrets and if i go there and just do the secret api key and since it is not checking again anything so we can just keep it anything for now so some secret key and i think adding this adding the secret should be enough so we have the secret now we need to modify our yaml file so before the build process we need to do we need to create an environment so dot env dot local and then echo secret api key equal to and then secrets dot secret api key and then dot env dot local so this is the syntax to add this environment key and hopefully if i just uh, hit add let's commit and modify uh, and if i do a push now so this time uh, the workflow should hopefully succeed so let's just go there and details and refresh this one so now we have just you know um, put in our sec injected our secrets to the to be you know consumed by next and that's the idea basically and this in this way you can you know pass as many secrets as you want let's say if you had uh, one more secret you would just have done you could just have copy pasted the same line and let's say api key to something like that you could have specified accordingly by adding it to the secrets and so on so that is the idea and let me just refresh it it says unexpected token okay okay this is weird because oh okay 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 i think we need to change the secret because for some reason it's not mm, what you say that it's not getting passed as string so let's do let's just keep it secret api key that's it and if i go to code back and if i just go to details and let's rerun fail jobs let's just open this one so yeah like this is how you know you do all this thing and this makes so loaded secrets hopefully so this time we should succeed and this is how you know you can pass in secret and do all these automated testing experience so now it all succeeded so we should get modified by ml and now you know everything is fine so this is all for this video i, I know this is a long video but i hope you got a better understanding of github you know, ci cd pipelines and how you can deploy one more actions and uh, the, about the unit test it was just a short introduction how you can use test but in case if you want to have more such videos let me know in the comments and i'll be creating more of that content i hope this was a helpful video and thank you very much